in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, Borodar Paub, good morning, everyone, and I hope you're all very well and keeping safe this morning. Welcome to our Eucharist here in St. Fagans on this, the second Sunday in the season of Easter. And in our Gospel reading today, we see the disciples meeting in a locked room for fear of the Jews. And I suppose we might feel a little bit like the disciples at the present time, as we are shuttered away in our own homes. Perhaps we too have fear at this time. But we also read how the risen Jesus then appeared among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. And so as we gather here to celebrate the Eucharist, we know that the Lord appears in our midst, here in bread and wine, and wherever we are, gathered in our homes, worshipping him. The Lord, the risen Lord comes to us and gives us his greeting of peace. And so we can cast all our fears upon him and be transformed by our encounter with him today. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who lived in Jerusalem. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, 
and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. All my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer. Neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me, He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you an emotional person? Or have you ever been told by someone else that you are an emotional person? One often associates an emotional person as someone who expresses their feeling in a, a very visible way. Perhaps tears come to your eyes at a sad experience. Or perhaps you get angry at an injustice. Perhaps you show great excitement when something good happens to you. From my understanding, there are many human emotions. But there are five basic ones. Joy, sadness, disgust, anger, and fear. I have certainly experienced all five. The joy of a new birth. The sadness of losing someone. The disgust of the world leaders in not helping who, who, those people who need help because they're in such poverty the anger at the continued fighting in the Middle East, and then the fear of, for the future of our planet. I'm sure that many of you watching today are also feeling fearful at the terrible virus that is spreading throughout this country and throughout the world. Something that is unseen to the naked eye is putting people in hospital and some with tragic results. Yes, I think we are emotional or fearful of catching the virus. The story we have heard from our Gospel reading today begins with the disciples ex experiencing abject fear too. The reading starts, When it was evening on the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, the big question is, why were they so afraid that they had to lock the door? In John's Gospel, as we heard last week, 
Mary Magdalene had been to the tomb and seen it empty. She had run and told the disciples, and Peter and John had gone back with her to check it out. The disciples then went back home, but Mary stayed at the tomb crying, and that's when she met the risen Christ. And the verse before the one we started with this morning says, So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. So why didn't the disciples go out looking for Jesus? Wouldn't you have gone out looking for him? I think I would have. But they did not. They stayed behind locked doors. Well, John says that they had locked the doors for fear of the Jews. But that actually isn't a very credible excuse, for there is no indication that the Jews had arranged a posse to hunt down the disciples, so there really was nothing for them to be afraid of. And besides, when Mary said that the tomb was empty, Peter and John rushed straight to be there. Now, if they were really afraid of the Jews, or the Romans, for that matter, they wouldn't have gone back to the tomb, because that is the one place where the authorities would have been hoping to capture them. So what was really making them afraid? What were they really running from? Who were they really, really hiding from? Perhaps they were actually afraid of running into Jesus. What if Mary was right? What if Jesus had been raised from the dead? What would he say if they bumped into him? They had every reason to be afraid. The last time he had seen the disciples was when they were deserting him at his arrest in Gethsemane. Sure, Peter had stayed with him, but then he had denied knowing him at all. How must the rest of them been feeling? They were probably desperately ashamed of themselves. And what would Jesus say if he saw them? How would he react? Would he be bearing a grudge? Would he be angry with them? Perhaps he would be out for revenge. No. Rather than going out for Jesus, it would be far safer to lock the door and hope the whole problem will go away. Perhaps we are more like the disciples than we want to admit. How often have you, and how often have I, locked the door to keep Jesus out? Maybe some part of our past, something we are particularly ashamed of, maybe some fear for the future. Sometimes we are frightened of what Jesus might think, what Jesus might do. So we lock up our heart, try to keep Jesus out, locking ourselves in for fear of what might happen. And sometimes we are not even honest with ourselves about why we are hiding or what we are hiding from. Maybe the disciples weren't keeping the Jews out, they were keeping themselves in. And what does Jesus do? He does what he always does when we try to hide from him. Jesus came and stood among them. He enters the room and breaks into their shame. Jesus takes the initiative. He enters the room and he says to them, Peace be with you. These words are the exact opposite of fear and shame and anxiety. Jesus says to the disciples, as he says to us, it's okay. He's not out to settle old scores. He's not angry with us. He knows our failures. He knows our weaknesses. He knows everything we have ever done wrong. And he says, it's okay. Let's move on. Do you notice he, he doesn't even say to the disciples, I forgive you. There is absolutely no mention of the past 
it's done, it's finished. It's not even remembered anymore. We just get this amazing verse of Scripture. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Why is this so amazing? Because Jesus is inviting us to start completely afresh and go right back to the beginning with him. In fact, what he is doing is taking us right back to the Garden of Eden for two reasons. First, it is in the Garden of Eden that humanity first hides from God. Do you remember in Genesis? That evening, they heard from the Lord God walking in the garden, and they hid from him among the trees. Adam and Eve hid from God among the trees. The disciples were hiding from God behind closed doors. Second, if we go back to Genesis chapter 2, then, then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils, and the man began to live. God breathed on Adam, and he began to live. In John 20, we heard today, Jesus breathes on his disciples, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, they are reborn. And here is the incredible truth of the gospel that we can hide from God because of our shame. We can hide from him out of our shame for our past. We can hide from him because of our bad habits and failures and weakness. But because he loves us so much, so much, God will come and seek us out and find us. And he will not bring up the past. He will not make us wallow in shame or guilt he won't humiliate us. He will seek us out and he will find us. And he will say, peace be with you. Or it's okay, I know. Or, and it's all okay. The Easter story is an act of recreation. It's like he takes us back to Eden and says, it's okay, let's begin again. It's not too late. It's okay, we can start again. And Jesus knocks at the door of each of our hearts. Perhaps because of what we know about ourselves, we don't want to open the door to Jesus. Perhaps like the disciples in this passage, we want to hide away and keep the door firmly locked. But that will not prevent the love of God reaching out to us. More than anything else in the world, Jesus wants to stand before us and say, Peace be with you. And to breathe the Holy Spirit on us all and bring new life to give us a fresh start, a new beginning. Easter is all about new beginnings. Perhaps this morning you and I need a new beginning with Jesus. Let us allow Jesus to breathe his Spirit on us and say to each one of us, Peace be with you. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. In these most unusual times, we may be some distance from each other, but let this Easter season be a time of new birth as we, decide, as we join the disciples as they left that locked room knowing that Jesus is with us as we let him into our hearts. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gwedhiun, let us pray. Mighty God, what an amazing gift we have received. We have been born again through the resurrection, and even though we have not seen the risen Christ, we love and believe in him, rejoicing with all Christians in an indescribable and glorious joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, like Thomas, we still face times of doubt and uncertainty. But we know that we are not alone in our doubts, and that you, our Father in heaven, continue to love us whatever our state of mind or body. We give you thanks for our fellow Christians in this land. We give thanks for all the hard work that Father Richard and other clergy are putting into online worship and for the way it keeps us together in worship, even though our churches are closed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our nations. We pray especially for our own country, and we particularly raise before you our concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic as the numbers affected continue to rise. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Father God, we pray for the times when our doubts, our fears, and our blinkered vision prevents us from taking care of our immediate family and household, or when through our own busyness we take no part in the life of our neighbourhood or wider community. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our faithful God, we hold before you those whom life has damaged and all who find difficult to trust in you. We pray that you will push aside their doubts and fears and bring them hope, comfort and healing, and with it an inner peace. And we bring to mind all those people who need our prayers at present, whether they are ill where they are emotionally ill or lonely. We ask you, Lord, to be with them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our merciful God, we pray for those who approach death with great fear and those who have died and prepared to meet you. Have mercy on us. For, for, forgive them for all that is past, and gather them into your everlasting kingdom of peace and joy. And we remember all those who have died recently. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. everlasting God, we thank you that our time of worship this morning renew our faith and trust in you and your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Help us during the coming week, ready to show our gratitude and live the good news of Easter. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. We are hoping, uh, as we've done the last few times, to have an offertory hymn uh, played by the, the magic of the iPad. And the hymn I've chosen for this morning is The Day of Resurrection. So if you have a hymn book or means of looking up the words online, you may wish to do so. And uh, why not sing along? Uh, if you're on your own, there's nobody to hear you. Uh, if there's more than one of you there, you can form a little chorus. So The Day of Resurrection will be our offertory hymn. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Tang neve ddur arglwydd, avog y dychwi bob amser. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine, to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise, and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. Grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching and let me never be parted from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The Body of Christ The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. Just uh, one or two quick notices this morning and um, a few mentions of happy occasions, which is always nice to focus on in this uh, strange and difficult time that we're living on in. So congratulations to Aaron Harris, who celebrated his birthday on the 15th of April, to Emily Lewis, who celebrated her 18th birthday on the 16th. Congratulations also to Peter and Meyer Perry, who celebrated their 44th wedding anniversary on uh, the 17th of April. And as I said in my little broadcast, it's nice to know that I'm a little bit younger than their married life. So congratulations to them. Uh, also to Olivia Lacey, who was nine yesterday, and my father, Duncan, who was a little bit older than nine, also yesterday. So we wish... Uh, all of those people, all the best. And if you'd like a mention for a special occasion, please do drop me an email. Also, if you'd like to dedicate the Blessed Sacrament lamp here in St. Fagans, we're continuing to uh, light it every Sunday, and it burns for a week. And you can dedicate it uh, either in memory of somebody or to mark a special occasion. If you'd like to do that, again, just drop me an email uh, and we do invite a small donation to cover the cost of the lamp, which you can 
uh, give by text, and that leads me on nicely to remind you about the text giving facility uh, which you may wish to use to give your collection on a Sunday, and to remind you uh, the number to text to is 785, 70085, and you text the word Fagan, F A G A N, and then the amount in numbers to that number. And it costs, obviously, the amount of the donation plus the cost of a standard text message. And we're very grateful to everybody who has continued to support us during this time. And I know many people are also putting their envelopes aside, ready for the time when we can come back together again. Uh, a reminder that we'll be doing our midweek broadcasts this coming week, as usual, on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. They're posted about 11 o'clock. And then next Sunday, we'll be back again with a live stream at half past nine. And also, because it's the fourth Sunday of the month next week, there'll also be the Welsh Eucharist at half past four in the afternoon. Diolchuch i'r arglwydd o herwydd graslo nwyf, give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life, and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin, and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Amen. Amen.